What's up animators, today I got a treat for you. Now the idea of having a 360 video on my animator dates back several years, with countless attempts, discussions, and even a really old tutorial that then got outdated. And if you want to know where all of a sudden my urge for VR video came from, then you gotta look no further than my comment section and my DMs. I get requests like this every now and then, and about two weeks ago, I got a request through somebody else's DM about it again. And since I've been using Maya and more advanced 3D animation softwares lately, I said, let's give it a try. Heck, I might just be able to figure it out. Boy, was I wrong. I've spent about a week researching 360 video. How it works, how does the software recognize it as 360, how it's mapped, and so on. And from the information I gathered, I knew the best method to do this is to export individual faces of the camera with a bit of overlap so the softwares can detect the edges and then find myself a good stitching software to piece it all together into a 360 map. I found a piece of software called Autopano Video Pro, which seemed to do the job. When I actually got it, I saw that I was in for something else that I was advertised. So I kept looking and looking through lists and softwares, but whatever I found was either discontinued, fake, or didn't work at all. Since I had no choice, I went back to Autopano. And even though the interface was really unappealing, to some extent it seemed to do the job fine. The problem with that was when I tried to put in the top and bottom video, the software put it in between the horizontal lines. So I was either going to have a 360 video without the sky and the ground, or completely lose my nerves trying. And mama didn't raise no quitter, so I started going at it. The biggest problem is that every time you make a change and want to see it in action, you have to re-export six video files. And once all that's done exporting, you have to fiddle with the settings in the software, not knowing my focal lens. And since I was using a digital camera, which only uses degrees, plus I didn't know the camera sensor size, I couldn't even calculate the distance. I also didn't know if a 100 degrees field of view counts as fisheye lens or not, nor did I know how my animator bakes that info, so I had to do a lot of guessing. I then used a vertical format to cover as much ground and sky as possible since I couldn't really use it in my layout, but that didn't even detect the edges. I then tried to fiddle with the distortion effects on the camera to mimic the fisheye lens, but that backfired as well. I tried going the other way, and that was even worse. Then, instead of four main cameras, I tried using eight of them to get a better stitching result. And if that worked, I could increase the format to be super vertical to cover a lot of the ground and a lot of the sky. There would be tiny holes in it, but I was willing to make that trade off. And even though it did detect it, it made everything super small for some reason. Regardless of the field of view, the format size, or the settings in the program itself, Everything I did beyond that point resulted in a mass failure. At the end, I even tried resorting to the settings I had in the first test, which seemed to work to some extent. Only this time the test failed, meaning the method is super unreliable and it's not usable. I was about to give up on the project entirely, but luckily I shared a bunch of tests from the early stages into my staff channels on my Discord server. And luckily one of the staff members, Life, saw that and offered me a hand, since he knew the solution. So there, after a week of trial and error, I finally got my answers. It was a little bit too late for me, so so the very next day we hopped into a call and he gave me a tutorial. So I made this animation. I love it. You probably just want to put a folder over it and then use Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I know. It's not at zero on the folder. You're just being all smart. You should just add a folder. Shut up. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Which was pretty hard to understand at times. Actually, I think this may have been correct. I'm wasting disk space recording this. <laughs> <laughs> Finally! Hey. I've done it. Where did it go? It was there just a moment ago, but now it's dead. Oh, wait. Or is it that? Or is it the fact that I haven't flipped the normals? See, I told you it's not working. Hold what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, there we go! And arguably, I had to do as much work as he did. Start frame is 300, bruh. Frames 1. That's the problem. Oh. And then you turned off auto refresh, so now it's not showing up anymore. That's why it's black. Okay, problem solved. That's why you should name your files. It was number right 4. It was number Shut 4. Up. Is that supposed to be the other side? Like the left this house? It's meant to be the other side. Don't worry, I've got this. Yeah, it's the wrong file. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> if I'm making this video, I'm gonna say it was a hell <laughs> to figure out what yeah, I'm supposed to do. <laughs> but thanks to him, we big brained the process together, so now I'm able to give you a 360 tutorial in Minimator, just like the test I posted a few days ago. So, let the fun begin! <laughs> and just to keep things interesting, I wanna browse for an old project. Oblivion vs. Herobrine. Now it's a super old livestream test. I've removed the camera and the first thing I recommend you doing is go into the project and under the size I want you to click custom. We need a square format. We're going to export six sides of the camera as a square. 1000 by 1000? Let's go 1200 just to be safe. And now if I add a folder, and this is my point of view, this is where your camera is gonna be. Now add a camera, put the camera in the folder, set everything to zero, call the camera front. Oops, caps lock. Front. Duplicate the camera. 
camera, turn it sideways, 90 degrees, call it right. Duplicate that camera, do that for all six cameras. Alternatively, you can just use one camera and rotate it every single time you make an export, but I personally prefer this method. Select all your cameras and put the field of view to 90 degrees. That's important because now all the cameras are perfectly mapping out each other. There's no overlap and there's no blind spots. Now you should probably animate your camera moving, but I'm not going for anything too advanced. Now it is a good point to mention that your camera needs to have all the effects, the depth of field and all the things you want to add to your animation. And once you're completely done with the camera motion, I want you to make all the cameras invisible, except your front camera. I want to make a folder on my desktop, call it camera sides, and I'll export my camera. And I want to stay closer to 30 FPS. The process is going to take a lot of time to render, and the more frames you have, the longer you're going to wait. 30 FPS is perfectly fine, especially if you're doing something like this, which takes a really long time to process. I speak from experience here. I want to call this footage front. Renaming is important, that way you can keep track of your project. Once it's done, make the camera invisible and make the next camera in row visible. Same export settings, call this one right. And then repeat the process for all six cameras. Finally! I'm lucky I'm only exporting less than three seconds, and even this took a lot of time. Now what I want to do is delete auto panel, because that sucks. The method we're using, and I can't believe I'm saying this, it's Blender. I can't believe the day has come, but yes, we're gonna use Blender to map out our textures into 360 video. It's also good because Blender is free and all of you can afford it. I'll put the download link of Blender in the description below. No, that doesn't mean I'm doing Blender. This is an exception. What you need to know is you can rotate around using the middle mouse click, and I'll talk you through everything else you need to know. But for now, I want you to delete this light, and I want you to click on the camera and press the letter N. You don't need to know anything about Blender, you can just follow my steps and it's going to work. Now in the location, I want you to change all of that to zero, and in rotation, I want you to put X on 90 and the rest on zero. The camera is now inside your cube, and now what we're gonna do is we're going to assign all the textures from your cameras in Minimeter into each face of the cube, and for that we need to separate our cube model. Press tab to enter edit mode, and now up here, click on the face. Now select one face, and then right click, separate, selection. This face is now separate from the rest of the cube. I want you to do this for all of the faces. Select, separate, selection. And although they're all separate, I want to do it for the bottom as well, just to play it safe. And I'll press tab to exit the edit mode. Now select the front face and click this icon down here. This stands for materials. I want you to double click this and call it front. This material will be using the front texture. Now put your mouse cursor in the far edge here and drag it out right. This will open up the second window. We're gonna need this because we're gonna use this window here as shading. Oops. Layout. My bad, I'm not familiar with Blender. I want you to click this icon and go into Shader Editor. This right here is your Blender material, but I want to assign my texture to it. So I'm gonna press Shift plus A to open up this window, click on Search, and type in Image Texture. Click on this and place this node anywhere you want by clicking again. This node will bring in your texture, so click on Open, and I'll browse for your front texture and click Open Image. Since you opened up a video, you need to tell the software how many frames you want to play. I've exported 85 frames, so I'm gonna type in 85, and I also know that I exported 30 frames per second, so I wanna click this icon with the printer, and here, under frame rate, I want to put this to 30, and the end should also be 85, because that's when your animation ends. That's where my animation ends. Now in here, I want to drive the color of this material into the emission pass. So now it is going to emit the color. I also want to put specular all the way down to zero, roughness all the way down to zero, sheen tint to zero, and clear coat roughness to zero. Turn everything off. We need a clear image. Now if you want to see the changes on your cube, simply click this icon here. This will display the textures. And now as you see, it's a little bit messed up. So let's go to UV editing, click this again, select the front face, and as you see, this is what your texture looks like. It's overlapping the face by a lot. So I want to right click on this, go to UV unwrap face, unwrap. That should put the texture across the entire face. Now let's go back to layout, and I want to select the right face of the cube. But now what's funny is that left and right are switched for, for whatever reason. Now, still having the material tab selected, I want to add a new material, click new again, because that's how it works, call this material, 
left because left and right are switched even though this is my right one i want to call it left and now select the front and delete it by clicking on this minus icon so now this face has the left material assigned to it and from then we added the material once again shift plus a click the search icon type in image texture place down the node open your file browse for the left texture type in 85 frames put the color into emission and reduce all the other aspects now the video is not mapped properly so let's go to uv editing select your face and you can see it's only picking a small portion of the texture right click UV unwrap faces, unwrap. But now you see it's turned upside down. So we need to rotate this 180 degrees. So on the left side, press tab, select the rotate tool, and also select the face selection, UV selection mode. And now if you click on the center here, you can rotate the UVs. Press R to rotate it and type 180 degrees, enter. This just flipped your image upside down. And as you can see, it connects with the other image. That's perfect. So once again, go back to layout and you can see your results in here. Now select the the other one give it a new material select new and even though this is technically my left side i want to call this right because it's all flipped and then remove the front face and in the uv editor shift a image texture put it here bras for right 85 frames color into emission remove specular roughness sheen and clear code roughness now once again it's not mapped so uv editing select right right click unwrap faces and this one seems to be fine if it's not rotate around just like the others layout select the back face new material call it back remove the front shift plus a search image texture bras for your back 85 frames color into emission and remove all the other attributes once again it's not mapped uv editing select the back face right click uv unwrap unwrap and it's turned upside down again select the circle press r type in 180 enter it should fix it go back to layout I am not entirely sure if this is turned correctly or not because the sand texture is a little bit confusing. So when you'll be doing your 360 video, make sure you're not as close to the ground as I was this time because I have absolutely no idea if this is properly turned or not. You're gonna make sure your videos are. Go back to layout. In the render properties up here, select your render engine to be cycles and now a very important thing put the render and viewport all the way down it goes one and zero that is going to save a ton of time with all the rendering and stuff because you just want the preview image you don't want any extra noise correction or stuff like that so you want to turn all this off to save a lot of time on the render now select the camera and going to the camera settings down here type of the camera needs to be panoramic and the panorama type needs to be equirectangular now if you want to see how your render works you need to press zero on your numpad and turn on the shading options here okay not the best press zero again to jump out of that mode and i'll click on the printer option again your current resolution is full hd i want to take this percentage and put it up to 200 i do not recommend you going any higher than 200 because my computer is pretty good and it took me five hours last time to export all that so don't go beyond 200 i went for 300 and i waited a long time 200 is fine now under file format i want you to select ffmpeg video you are exporting a video file and this is compressed so it's not gonna be as intense on your pc i also want you to select the output and i want to export it to my camera sides full underscore video uh video accept and now the encoding options down here i want you to put the container on MPEG-4. Yet again, another compression encoder. I'm doing you a favor. And now under output quality, I want you to put in high quality. Now, if I jump back into my render by pressing zero on my numpad, turn on this mode, and I don't see what's up with the image now. One sec. And one super, super important thing I forgot to mention, when you select your face, go into the material, or you can do it up here, the base color of all the materials needs to be set to black. So if I go and do that real quick, you can see the image is already getting a lot more clear. I really should have said that sooner. So now if I I hop in my render view and select the shaded option you can see this is your 360 video this is what you'll be exporting if i hop out real quick if i do a double check this is full hd this is 200 my end frame is correct frame rate also correct exporting correct ffmpeg mpeg4 h264 high quality everything is good so to export this video go ahead to render and click render animation zoom out to see what you're exporting and now you can grab yourself a sandwich because this usually takes a lot of time and as you can see we're getting this line here that means the bottom face was not turned in the correct way. So I sat down through the render, watched the computer process every little bit of the image frame by frame as it was constructing my video. It's a very interesting process to watch, but we're not entirely done yet. There's one more step we need to do to make this video truly 360 degrees. 
So even though it took all my render settings down, it still took 22 minutes for the render, and my PC is pretty good, so be careful when you fiddle with the settings, cause you might as well age on that chair. For now though, let's take a look at what we have. The video seems warped and that is fine, and everything seems to be working fine except this little square at the bottom that I didn't see in Blender. I could've just moved forward to see this frame and align it here, but what matters is you guys know how to fix it. This is just a tutorial, I'm gonna leave it like this, but if you upload this file to YouTube, it's just going to be a flat square. If you really want to make a 360, there's one more thing you gotta do. And that is where Spatial Media Metadata Injector comes into play. It is a wonderful piece of software, it is completely free and the link is in the description down below. You download it, put it on your desktop, and all you do is simply run it. That will give you a little window pop-up, and then you click open and browse for your full video here, open it up, it's gonna say my video is spherical 360, and just click inject metadata. It's going to automatically add the underscore injected tag, leave the name as it is or it won't work, simply click save, and that's it. You can close everything up and this injected video is now your finished 360 millimeter video if you open it up windows automatically detects it and you can already preview it see what it looks like and from here you can post it on youtube and that is it one thing though you do have to animate a 360 degree angle for example in my animation as the camera was looking at hero brian oblivion was standing completely still but in 360 you can see all of that <laughs> So if you're doing a 360 video, you have to animate the entire 360 field of view. It also takes a little bit longer to render, but in the end, it is all worth it. And that is how I make 360 video in my animator. Now, if you like this video, please show your support by dropping a like on this video because it does help out the channel a lot. You can also come back anytime to watch this video as a tutorial if you forget how it's done. And if you make something cool, please show me. I want to see it. Now, thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. Until next time, stay sharp.